Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the interview dialogue of the Trumpet of Truth. I'm your host, Jin. Since Almighty God started His end-time work in China, the words of Almighty God has been testified and spread wider and wider. Now God's work in the last days has already been extended overseas. Almighty God's words has also been translated into many languages and published online. More and more people who truly believe in God, thirst for and seek the truth, are investigating Almighty God's work. Many people wanted to know more about the Church of Almighty God and God's new work in the last days. So today we invite two American Christians from the Church of Almighty God to share with us their story and what they have experienced in the Church of Almighty God. They are our special guest, Tina and her husband, Charlie. Hi, Tina, Charlie. Hi, Jane. Hi, Jane. Nice to meet you. Nice to be Pleasure here. Pleasure to be here. Welcome to our studio. Thank you for having us. Okay. Which part of the U.S. are you from? Golden Valley, Arizona. Yes, yeah, between um, Laughlin and Kingman, and it's a small town. You know, um, Kingman's the bigger city, but we're like in a small town. There's probably 35,000 people. And Arizona is known for its sunsets and sunrises. We have some beautiful sunsets and sunrises there. Mm -hmm. Are there uh, many Christians there? There's quite a few Christians there. There's a lot of different small churches. Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran. Were you a Christian before you accepted God's end time work? Yes. Yes, yes, I've always been a Christian. I've always believed in God since I was a young child. So, oh. yeah. So you read Bible often and pray to God every day? Um, yes, I read the Bible starting probably in my early 20s on my own. And it progressed on through the years. So, yeah, I read a lot of the Bible. And how about your family? How many children do you have? We have four children. Um, two older girls, one 24 and one 19. The 24-year-old, her name is Brittany. She works in the medical field. My 19-year-old, her name is Gabrielle. She works in the dentistry field. And then we have two boys, 12, Donovan and John. They're still in middle school, very active in sports. and. And they also believe in, in God. We, we're raising them with God also. Wonderful. Yeah. Blessed family. Thank, Thank you. God. Thank we God. actually fellowship as a family on Sundays. Yeah. And the two younger boys, they fellowship with a youth group on Fridays. Wonderful. Yeah. How did you come into contact with the Church of Almighty God? Um, I actually came in contact with the church. It was um, it's God's blessing, actually. He directed me to the church. Um, back in 2016, I started thinking about what life was really about, the purpose of life and what the meaning of life was. Because of going through the motions of tradition and, you know, working, striving to make money, gain possessions, and then the end result always being death. It, you know, I thought there's got to be more to life than this. There's, you know, life is very precious. So I started praying to God every day and I asked God, you know, to show me what His will was and what my purpose in life was to have, have meaning, because I want to have meaning within my life. So I dedicated myself to praying every day, and um, I saw a lot throughout the year about words, how important words are, that God's words are very, very powerful. You know, he said in the beginning, let there be light, and there was light. So God's words are very powerful. And then I recognized, you know, I've read many times in the Bible in John, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So words are very important. And I looked on Facebook a lot because I wanted to find truth. So I'd punch in truth on Facebook, and i never seen anything different. So I joined some different Christian sites just to see if I could find, you know, God, find the truth. And i never seen much different. It was all about, you know, give all your problems to God and God will solve everything. <laughs> it's kind of like rely on God, you know, just believe in Him and rely on Him and He'll make the way for you. Yeah. So it was nothing different than, you know, what's been preached throughout time, history. And then I recognized a different site on Facebook. It was called, um, The Lord Jesus Has Already Returns. And I started reading some of the stuff they were posting from there and 
it amazed me. It was a lot different. It talked about um, God's judgment in the end times, you know, that it's here. Um, how does one really believe in God? How should you believe in God? And that God's words were, um, have been expressed and they've been brought down to the earth. Mm -hmm. And it made me think, you know, I was very interested in finding out more. And one day there was a live video on from that site. Mm -hmm. And I actually clicked on the live video and I wasn't on there very long and I got a message in my messenger box from a sister from the Church of Almighty God. And we started talking about my beliefs and she started telling me a little bit about mm -hmm. God's mm -hmm. end time plan. And it was very interesting and I wanted to learn more. So I agreed to start fellowshipping. And I can tell you it was the best decision of my entire life. Amen. Amen. Yeah, your prayer is answered. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, I have met some people, you know, who were, who were eagerly waiting for the Lord's return and have been praying, keep on praying for it. Yes. And one day they saw a film or a video or article of Almighty God's Word that touched their heart. Mm -hmm. And they realized you know, their prayers answered. Yes. Yes. And, and from then on, they started to, you know, to truly believe, accepted God's end time work. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's something that we've never seen before. It's, mm -hmm. you know, everybody believes that, um, that just believing in Jesus and asking for forgiveness for your sins that were saved. But this seems to go, you know, a little bit beyond that of knowing how God's been among us, managing us, trying to save us. Yeah. So it goes a lot deeper than what I've learned, you know, of searching on my own mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. finding this. It's, it was a blessing to find it. So how did you, in the end, become certain that it's God's work? Um, because it, it's a continuation of um, the Lord Jesus' work in the age of redemption. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying, you know, that forgiveness of sins. We sin during the day and we ask for forgiveness of sins at night. Well, the age of kingdom is here and it's a purification process to where, you know, God is the beginning and the ending. God is the only one that can end an age and open up a new age. And we can see that from going in from the Old Testament into the New Testament where um, God kind of gave mankind laws, you know, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. he, um, he was actually the sin offering for mankind to redeem mankind of their sins. So we ended the age, which is called the age of law, the Old Testament, and the age of grace, which is the New Testament, and he ended that age and opened up a new age. Mm -hmm. And now going into the age of kingdom, mm -hmm. and the age of kingdom is opening up to where God is holding us to a higher standard of purifying us so we can be cleansed of our corruption and actually know where the root of our corruption comes from. So it's amazing. And um, God is the only one that can actually express the truth, you know, because mankind doesn't have truth. They have opinions, they have notions, they have imaginations, but who's to say who's right, who's wrong? Exactly. Now God, we, you know, he expresses the truth it reveals everything about God, God's disposition, God's substance. He knows what's in man's heart and what's in man's mind. No man could ever know that. So God has revealed all truths. Mm -hmm. And by revealing the truth and giving us one way to follow, mm -hmm. we can recognize how corrupt we are. Because we see the truth, you know, it's God's truth. And we see that we've fallen so far away from God over the years that God's trying to give us the way to get back to Him, to be purified, to be able to enter into the kingdom. Amen. So it's, it's amazing. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> oh, I feel very blessed, believe me, that um, I can hear God's voice. Amen. How about you, Charlie, then? Um, I was very skeptical. Uh -huh. I, I'm, I'm very arrogant and, you know, I, I'm, I'm a stubborn man. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to believe initially you know I there was nobody that was gonna make me believe my wife my dad my mom so until I picked up the book and started reading for myself I seen the authority and the power in the words of the book and I, I said to myself well no man can talk to me this way that it, it, it must be God because that's how the Bible used to talk to me mm. So I, I found a lot of authority and power in the words, and that touched my heart deeply. So then I, I also started reading and, and fellowshipping after that. And 
That means Tina first contact the words of Almighty God, and then you were not really convinced before, and then... Gradually I came around to it and started searching it because it seemed, you know, it seemed like it was right by what she was studying and what she was saying. It sounded true, but I didn't, me being skeptical and arrogant, I, I just was like, no way, you know, it's, it's supposed to be in the clouds. I didn't expect words to be what was going to judge me and chastise me, you know, I never expected that. So, you know, it, it was very deep that, that it happened that way. And, and, you know, from there, from reading those words, then I, I started to get more interested in and started researching the truth more and, and research. And it was very good. Yeah. So from which aspect you, you see that is really make certain, you know, you feel make certain that is God's work? Um, actually, it was a passage in, in his book. May I read it to you? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yes, please. Thank you. It says, my words are the forever unchanging truth. I am the supply of life for man and the only guide for mankind. The worth and meaning of my words are not determined by whether they are recognized or accepted by mankind, but by the substance of the words themselves. Even if not a single person on this earth can receive my words, the value of my words and their help to mankind are inestimable by any man. Therefore, when faced with many men, who rebel against, refute, or utterly contemptuous of my words, my stance is only this. Let time and facts be my witness and show that my words are the truth, the way, and the life. Let them show that all I have said is right and is that which man should be furnished with, and moreover, that which man should accept. Amen. Amen. It's very touching. It's, it's deep words that, you know, only God could speak to you through. It's very powerful to, to know that of this time, you know, that, that He is speaking to my heart through His words, and, and nobody's able to do that. Uh, anybody that truly knows me knows that I'm very arrogant, very stubborn, you know, I, I'm not an easy person to persuade, so only God can persuade me. And I've had many men say they were going to judge me, and I tell them, no, only God will judge me. That's how, you know. And, and I thank my wife, you know. My wife, you know, she stayed dedicated to bringing me to the Word, even though I was fighting against it. You know, I had to look at it myself. I had to acknowledge it for myself. I, that was the only way. And thank God, you know, I, I'm going to give it the best shot that I can possibly give to make that change because eternal life means more than anything else. It, it's eternal. It's, it's better than anything material. So it's, I'm happy to be on a different path and to be learning more new things about God. Amen. The mysteries and everything's being revealed. Amen. And it's very exciting. Yeah. Well, I can vouch for the arrogance because he is very, very arrogant. But uh, when he picked up God's words, God's words speak for themselves. You know, he's recognized it. He's a very arrogant person, you know, like self-right. But God's words, you know, he even wonders, can I change my disposition, you know, because I'm so arrogant. And God's words, they pierce me in my heart. He's, he's said that to me. So, you know, God's words are very, very powerful. That's true. And God's words reveal our corruption. And only because we're so corrupt, that's why those words affect us in such a deep way. Because if we weren't corrupt, you know, just by God expressing the truth, we would be able to accept it a little bit easier. But by being so corrupt, it it pierces your heart because we can see how far away we've gotten from God and how we actually have become the embodiment of Satan 
where Satan has misled us down the wrong path. I can see that it's God's, Almighty God's Word that touches your heart and brought you into the mm -hmm. Church of Almighty God. Yes. And God's Word is the truth. Yes, thank yes. God. Amen. The truth is very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, when I first seen it, I thought, you know, God is brilliant. By just revealing the truth, it can accomplish so much. It's the only thing that can change mankind in the direction of mankind. It's the only thing that can purify us because only God can speak the truth. And only God knows the truth. Only God knows our hearts and our minds to be able to put it into the right perspective, mm -hmm, basically, mm -hmm. so. That's really true, mm -hmm. that's really true. I'm, I'm very happy for you to finally yeah. find yeah. the truth. Yeah. But I also met some people, you know, who, who listen to the CCP's, you know, propagandas against Church Almighty God. Now, CCP is atheistic and is a liar against the Church of Almighty God, and it has spread a lot of rumors. You know, yes, they have. have. Have you ever heard of any of them? You know, I seen the one rumor um, on YouTube because I started researching a lot of the videos from the church on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And when you look up the church, you'll see a, a video that talks about um, the murder in China where they say five members of the Church of Almighty God mm -hmm. beat a woman to death for not giving them her phone number. And, you know, I just thought that was ridiculous. You know, I... um. I study with a lot of these church members, you know, the, the brothers and sisters from the church, and they're very nice, compassionate, loving people. And actually, when I joined the church, I learned that there's actually principles to join the church. You got to have good humanity, you got to love God, and you got to love the truth. And, you know, it says on there that they wouldn't give a phone number, so that's why they beat her to death. So, you know, for people, like that, that um, beat that woman to death, they wouldn't even be allowed to be members of the church. And I know that Christians are heavily persecuted in China just for believing in God. And uh, there's a lot of house churches to where, you know, if they're caught preaching the gospel or preaching about God, they're arrested and they're tortured. So I know, you know, that they would never ask for a phone number by, for somebody to spread the gospel because that's automatic um, condemnation. If, they're caught, the CCP confiscates their phones, their computers, and any numbers on there, they start to go research those other people. So they would never use a phone to spread the gospel. So, you know, I, I didn't believe that. And knowing how the church members are, of what they're trying to seek, it, it just did not make sense to me. So, you know, that, that's really a false statement that was, um, that was put out there. And I think it was, you know, because the CCP is hard after the church members. Right. You know, facts speak louder than words. Anyone who has some knowledge of the Church of Almighty God can see clearly that McDonald case is merely CCP slander to attack and defame the Church of Almighty God. Unfortunately, some people believe the rumors before they actually investigate Almighty God's work. So they were caught by fear and refused to investigate Almighty God's work in the last days and lost their salvation. You know, it's really pity. So about these rumors of CCP, Charlie, what do you think? When, when I researched it, it really angered me because why didn't anybody help? I mean, if I would have been there, that wouldn't have happened. Uh, there's just no way. I, 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 I wouldn't have let that happen. If I see that in my country here in the U.S., five people beating up one lady, I'm not going to let it happen. I'm going to jump in there and, and stop it. So to me, it was ridiculous. It almost seemed like they staged it because who wouldn't help a woman? Mm -hmm. You know, who would just allow that to happen? So to me, I felt like it was an act. Rumors are always rumors. You know, even though they have been you know, repeated millions of times, you know, they can never become the truth. Yeah. From you, you mentioned about the brother and sister in the Church of Almighty God, and you don't think they can do such kind of thing. So what, in your opinion, what kind of people are, are they, you know, the, the brothers and sisters? The brothers and children? sisters? Yeah, you contact. They're, they're I, can, I can start off sharing, you know, my understanding of what we're reading. Mm -hmm. 
And when I leave something out or, or I don't touch on all the, the topics, you know, or all the expressions, I have a brother out there that I've only met one time, and his name's Jimmy. And Jimmy, he picks up from where I left off, and he is able to, to fill in where I missed to where me and him together are tag team brothers, you know? Um, and, and we're not even the same culture. I'm American and he's Chinese, but, but we speak to each other's hearts and we're able to, to know how each other feels. So the brothers and sisters, we all, we all get along like a family. It, it's, it's great. It's different from any church. Amen. How about you, Tina? What do you think about? They're um, God-fearing people. They, they love God. They're very knowledgeable about God's end time work, about um, God's management plan, you know, how God's been among us for such a long time to, for salvation, basically. So their um, goal is to accept the purification, the judgment and chastisement from God. So they're very loving people. They're very kind. Um, they're very trustworthy. They're very reliable um, to where if you need them, you know, and they're in a fellowship or something, they'll let you know they're doing something, but as soon as they're done, they're, they're glad to get with you and help us solve our problems. Of, um, they know how to seek out God's words, very good, to where if I'm going through something, they can send me a, a passage of God's words or a movie that relates to, you know, problems I'm having or trials I'm going through at that time. So they, um, they love God. Thank you, Tina. They're pretty much like family to me. They, they have all the answers that I've, I've had questions about. So mm. I, I, I tend to um, treat them like family. Mm, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, you seem to find a very good team to fellowship with. Yes, they, they, like, um, they work as a team. You know, it's like God's family is trying to achieve the same goal. So everybody's helping each other going through the judgment and the chastisement, but everybody has to accept their own judgment and chastisement. But it's a matter of when we encounter trials of everybody helping each other to, you know, to overcome, to become purified. So it's a blessing to be able to be part of the family. Amen. That means that they have the same goal to pursue. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I don't have very many friends. I never have. And it's been very hard for me to open up to people. And, you know, I can open up and tell my deepest, darkest secrets to them or things that, you know, are deep felt, heartfelt um, emotions to them. And they can do the same with me to where, you know, they, it's very, very close interactions of, to where the outside world I could never do that with because I cannot trust people. You know, you tell them something and they'll use it against you. And, you know, with the, the brothers and sisters from the church, it's nothing like that, you know. It's all of us helping each other to build each other up to um, to become purified. Mm -hmm. I think you. It's truly it's, uh, the fellowship you you start with the brothers and sisters. It really helps a lot. And yes. what is the the fellowship you have gone through, and what what kind of the church life you know, is like in the church of Almighty God? Um, we do fellowships. Mm -hmm. We watch gospel movies. We'll sing together, you know, during the fellowships, or we'll dance. It's a whole different way of life to where people are real. Expressing their heartfelt emotions, their heartfelt inside self, instead of trying to mm -hmm. try to look good in front of others. Most people will try to tell you the positive things to where they try to make a good impression. Well, the good impression doesn't exist with the church members. It's all about laying your heart out on the line mm -hmm. and trying to overcome your corruptions. Help each other. And everybody helps each other with their corruptions. Of, mm -hmm. um, Like I, if I go through problems, I can tell one of the sisters and they'll send me some of God's words, words. that I can mm -hmm. read pertaining to what I'm, I'm going, going through. through so yeah. I know how to seek the truth out within it and overcome mm -hmm. it. So it's a whole different way of life. Mm -hmm. And it's more real way of life, more... Um, compassionate, more loving. 
They're very trustworthy people. Mm -hmm. They're very reliable. You can contact them at any time. And, you know, if they're doing a fellowship, they'll tell you, you know what, I'm in a fellowship. When I get finished, you know, we can talk. So it's very um, togetherness, I guess you could say. From what you're sharing, I can see, you know, you all feel released in the meeting and lay bare all the difficulties to each other and solve them by seeking the truth together. Everyone pursues to be an honest person. You know, such kind of church life is indeed beneficial to the growth of life. What about you, Charlie? And could you share what you have gained and your feelings in the church life? I gained, I gained a family. A new family is what I gained. Um, there's no other way to explain it. I mean, everything else I've got to change for myself through God's words, but through that I've gained a family. Uh, brothers and sisters, they were, they were so excited to take pictures with us and, and, and just talk with us. And it, it was an amazing feeling to actually, you know, go to the church because it's not like any church I've ever gone to. I mean, every church I've ever been to was, you had a pastor and the pastor spoke words out of the Bible, which, you know, we, we've all read them, you know, so he, he'd just mock up a, a sermon and, and tell us words we already knew. And he kind of shout them with authority. And, you know, when I came to the church, almighty God, I found out, wow, there, there was only two hosts. And wow, we, we, we studied all of God's words together. Oh, and wow, I, I can get up there and I can share my understanding of what we just studied. I don't have to just keep it to myself. So I was able to get up and share before the church and everybody that, that I, I was enlightened by these words, you know, and, and when I was done, my heart was touched and, and my brothers and sisters were happy. They were, they were happy that my heart was touched and now I touched their heart because I was touched. So it was a very, very good feeling that people I didn't even know was touched by my understanding and then somebody else would share their understanding and and it would touch me again, and also they were touched. So it's, it's not like regular church. Church Almighty God, it was very exciting. There was so much to learn. Yeah. What is your experience then? Um, I've gained a lot of meaning and purpose to my life to where, you know, I've learned a lot about God, God's substance, God's disposition. My corruption's actually deep within myself. It's like I'm trying to gain reality of the truth and making that your life to where you live that every day and you live and have experiences, trials, tribulations within our corruptions to eliminate them. And everybody's doing the same thing. So, you know, when we do fellowships and we share, you can actually feel the work of the Holy Spirit because you feel these people are enlightened by what they're reading and when they're sharing. And we learn from each other. People are going through different things. And so when we read a passage and we share something we might miss, they might bring up and we're like, oh, you know, I can relate to that. You know, I can see that. And there's a lot of different fellowships where there's like life experience fellowships mm -hmm. where people have experienced um, their corruptions and they open themselves up. You know, they don't feel like they'll receive any condemnation. No one gives them right. condemnation. But you can relate to that of seeing your arrogance, you know, and dealing with other people. And it's kind of, you know, you work with it through God's words. Yeah. And, you know, out in the outer world, you think, I ain't going to tell nobody oh, that, no. that I'm arrogant. Yeah. But within the church, you know, it's something that everybody's experiencing. And we're, it's like you can see how they've eliminated there. So, mm -hmm. You know, maybe you look within yourself, you know, I have that same thing. How can I eliminate my arrogance or how can I deal with it? Or how can I help them yeah. with theirs or whatever so it's they're amazing. going through? So yeah. it, it's give and take when it comes yeah. to our fellowships. You can usually hear when somebody's down in, in a fellowship, you know, like they're going through something. Yes. And, and, you know, to have the nerve enough to ask them, you know, what's going on? How, you know, what is the problem? You know, that, that takes a lot to do that to somebody, you know. That means that you care for them. 
And and when they when they explain to you the their problem, you know, then you start thinking of ways to try to help them yes. and build them back up so that yes. you know they feel strength strength within them again, and and then God overtakes their spirit again, and, and then they feel positive and, and and they can get through their problems. So that 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 is real. That's a plus, you know, that we can help yes. each other that way. You know? I can see that all you, you know, the church of Almighty God, you know, gives you a same goal to yes. pursue yes. to get rid of the corruption yes. I, from what you shared. Right. I think that's a, something very very important. Right. Well, it's amazing yeah. that God's words affect everybody. We're all very corrupt, but you have this one truth that affects everybody in a different way and they're all seeking the same goal is to eliminate their corruption. So it's kind of like um, finally having reality, you know, knowing what truth is and be able to um, put that into your life, life experiences through the truth. Right. So it's a whole different way of life instead yeah. of relying on our, ourselves, our own imaginations, our own notions, we now have the truth that we can follow to mm -hmm. gain life. You know, God, it says, He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Mm -hmm. And there's only one way, there's only one truth. And if you know those two ways, you can actually gain life. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, God is very amazing. and. That's what God is. God has, He very reveals practical. everything. He's a very, very practical God. Amen. It is really very practical that Almighty God expressed the truth to save the corrupt mankind in the last days. As long as we accepted the judgment and chastisement of God's word, we can gradually know the truth and know our corruption and has true knowledge of God's righteous disposition. In the end, we will have a true heart of fearing God and receive the purification and completely get rid of sin. So that's amazing. Well, you, yes. you grow rather fast. Yes, mm. rather because fast. Because God is speaking directly to you. Yes. Mm. If, you're, if you're a true God-fearing person, God is speaking to your heart and your spirit. So how could it not be God? Mm -hmm. You know, because nobody speaks that way. Yeah. I've read the Bible for a long time, and I've learned more in the last six months about God, mm -hmm. about me, about Satan, than I have of reading the Bible since I was 20, so that's 30 years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've learned more in six months than I have in 30 years, mm -hmm. and that's by having the truth, mm -hmm. by finally having the truth. Yeah, that's, that's all because Almighty God started a work of word, disclosing yes all the truths yeah. so that we can understand so much, understand His work and understand. Yes. Thank God for the power of Almighty God, God's yeah. Word. <laughs> you Amen. know, I never knew God was so practical. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you feel God's presence every day, mm -hmm. you know, and knowing that God has been trying to save us since the beginning of time, you know, His. God is the only one that can reveal mm -hmm. His 6,000 year management plan. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're at the end of this management plan to where we need to be purified to continue on into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And you know, I never realized how God was among us that whole time. Mm -hmm. And you can see God's love, God's patience for mankind, of all the pain that He's endured of being mm -hmm. so far away from Him. So it's a blessing to try to even repay God's love by accepting His new work. Amen. Amen. You know what? You know, many people admire the disciples of Lord Jesus at that time because they could listen to the preaching of Lord Jesus very often and be face to face with the Lord. Today, you know, we can hear the personal voice of Almighty God and can know God's will directly from Almighty God's Word. That is being face to face with God. Amen. Thank you, Tina and Charlie. Thank you for your wonderful sharing. You're welcome. Yeah. And in the, end nice. our, yeah, in the end of our interview, um, would, do you have anything to say to our audience? Um, for the end, I'd like to read some words that really touched my heart. Okay, of course, sure. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, it says, um, in the last days, Christ uses a variety of truths to teach man, reveal the essence of man, and dissect his words and deeds. These words comprise various truths, such as man's duty, how man should obey God, how man should be loyal to God, how man ought to live out the normal humanity, as well as the wisdom and disposition of God, and so on. 
These words are all focused on the essence of man and his corrupt disposition. In particular, those words that reveal how man spurns God are spoken in regards to how man is an embodiment of Satan and an enemy force against God. When God does the work of judgment, he does not simply make clear the nature of man with just a few words, but carries out revelation, dealing, and pruning over the long term. Such manner of revelation, dealing, and pruning cannot be substituted with ordinary words, but with the truth that man does not possess at all. Only such manner of work is deemed judgment. Only through such judgment can man be persuaded be thoroughly convinced into submission to God and gain true knowledge of God. What the work of judgment brings about is man's understanding of the true face of of God and the truth about his rebelliousness. The work of judgment allows man to gain much understanding of the will of God, of the purpose of God's work and of the mysteries that could not be understood by man. It also allows man to recognize and know his corrupt substance, and the roots of his corruption, as well as to discover the ugliness of man. These effects are all brought about by the work of judgment, for the substance of such work is actually the work of opening up the truth, way, and life of God to all those who have faith in him. This work is the work of judgment done by God. These words are very powerful, and, you know, our judgment is done through God's words. It's just amazing. I would like to say that, guess what, people? God is back, and he's come with a purpose. And if he's able to change somebody as corrupt and arrogant as me, it should be easy for the rest of you. Mm -hmm. That's (laughs) all I can say to that, because people that know me know what kind of person I, I was and all the corrupt things I've done, so... Thank God that I was able to find the truth. So when I finally started researching the Almighty God, it was it was an incredible feeling because I just was like, how 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 could this talk to me this way? It just it, it's very incredible feeling, and that's what I'm going to share about that because I could go on and on. <laughs> And I don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm very touched by God, and it's a very amazing thing to be, is touched by God. It's like nothing other that I've ever experienced. Thank God. That's really true. God has already returned, and He's doing the work of judgment with His Word, so that those who truly come before Him can be completely purified. Tina and Charlie, you can accept God's work in the last days. You are blessed. This is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, for without holiness, no one can see God. So I really hope those who are eagerly waiting for the Lord's return and those who thirsty for the truth can enjoy Almighty God's work like you do and be purified and finally receive God's promise. I've gained a lot and all the thanks goes to Almighty God. Amen. Praise God. For the ending, I'd like to share a hymn I've learned and um, to show my gratefulness and praise to Almighty God. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, why not? What song is that? It's called The Heart's Voice of a Created Being. Oh, good. That's a good hymn. Great, great. Let's start. I wanted to cry, no No place place was right, I wanted to sing, no song was found, I wanted to express the love of a created being, searching high and low but no words could say, could say just how I feel. And 
and we're gonna see you next time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for inviting me. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, thank God. Praise God.